welcome to this episode of our election road trip. Our journey across France to explore voters' key concerns ahead of the upcoming presidential election. Now we're off to the airport because we're heading to the French Caribbean. <laughs> The penultimate stop of our road trip brings us to the French overseas island of Guadeloupe, some 7,000 kilometres from Paris, a physical distance that, for many here, is also political. I'm angry because we voted for certain candidates, but now we don't ever see them, we don't hear them. Water's life. Without water, we can't do anything. We need to abandon what's currently a paternalistic relationship and replace it with a relationship between equal partners. Guadeloupe and neighbouring Martinique recently saw mass social unrest over mandatory vaccine rules imposed by Paris, protests that brought other long-standing grievances to the surface. A closer look now at the often complicated relationship between France and its overseas territories. The vestiges of France's colonial empire can be found across the globe in the form of 12 French-administered territories. The most populous fall under the category of regions and departments. Guadeloupe and Martinique in the Caribbean, French Guiana in South America, and Réunion and Mayotte in the Indian Ocean. At the last count, some 2.8 million people lived across France's overseas territories. That's 4.1% of the entire French population. And as French citizens, they vote in national elections, sending 27 representatives to the French National Assembly and 21 senators. But representation doesn't always mean equal opportunity. For a start, overseas salaries are on average 10% lower than on the mainland, while the cost of basic goods like food and fuel is often much higher. 14% of French citizens in mainland France live below the poverty line. That more than doubles in Guadeloupe to 34% and skyrockets to 77% in Mayotte. And infant mortality rates tell a similar story. In European France, 3.3 French children out of 1,000 die before they reach the age of one, in line with the EU average. That figure is eight for Martinique and Réunion, similar to that of Kazakhstan. Legally speaking, France's overseas territories are just as French as anywhere else. Basic measures of affluence all too often tell a different story. At the last election, Guadeloupe's second round abstention rate was just over half, compared to a national average of 25%. Caught between apathy and frustration, many Guadeloupians have lost faith in the democratic system. There's a lot of agitation among people here, with people asking themselves questions about the place they occupy within the wider French nation. The idea of a global France. When you speak to younger people, they often feel that Guadeloupe isn't really a part of France. I'm angry because we voted for certain candidates, but now we don't ever see them, we don't hear them. They just make a quick stopover saying they'll do this or that for young people or for older people, but nothing ever gets done. Last time I checked, we're still French citizens. For the past 10 years, they've been telling us that they hear us when we say we have a long-standing problem with our water supply. That they hear us when we say we don't have hospitals here. They hear it, but they don't understand it. They don't do anything concrete to bring an end to our suffering. One of the key frustrations here concerns something fundamental. Guadeloupe has an abundant supply of fresh water, yet for years the island's water management system has been in disarray. Karina Chabot reports. A daily ritual in the Goulbert neighborhood. I do this every morning. When the water stops running, when there's nothing left, I have to come to get water here. 
It's become a precious commodity and an impractical chore for Lydia Rossinelle. Her autistic daughter by her side, she has to visit her in-laws frequently. They have water most of the time. Once a week, they'll cut it off around 8 p.m. and then turn it back on the next day. Lydia jumps at the opportunity to do her laundry and to freshen up. Water's life. Without water, we can't do anything. We really can't do anything. Life in Guadeloupe is dictated by these water cuts. Ironically, the island here is awash with waterfalls and rivers. The issue is the piping that dates from the 50s and hasn't been properly maintained. Leaks like this one happen everywhere. 63% of all water ends up flowing back to nature. And the pipes aren't the only problem. For a long time, the pesticide chlordicone was widely used in banana plantations here. The now banned substance heavily degraded the quality of the water. And there's another scandal this opposition figure wants to highlight. This wastewater treatment station cost 13 million euros. The EU financed 53% of it. The whole system has been abandoned since the inauguration in 2013. The main culprit, he says, are local authorities. We just voted on the first budget, which has a deficit of 85 million euros, 75 million of which is debt, 56 million of which goes to suppliers. That's without mentioning the banks. The collective of local authorities here don't have the finances for this station to work. This means wastewater ends up in the ocean. On the island, two-thirds of treatment stations aren't up to code which could be a ticking time bomb for the environment. Guadeloupe's Delgrès Fort is named after Louis Delgrès, a free black man who led a rebellion against French troops that came here to reinstate slavery in 1802. The rebellion ultimately failed, but for many Delgrès remains a potent symbol of the tensions that remain between Paris and its former colony. It's here we're meeting Dr. Raphael Lapin, lawyer, writer, and president of local citizens group Guadeloupe A Mouvement. Raphael Lapin, we've seen there's significant mistrust of central government here in Guadeloupe. Why is it so hard to bridge that gap? There's a fracture that's deep rooted. It comes from Guadeloupe's very complicated history with France. We're simultaneously a French overseas department, which is supposed to mean that Guadeloupians have exactly the same status as any other French person, but at the same time we're overseas. We want to be completely equal to other French citizens, but the reality is we don't have water. The reality is that we have a much harder time accessing housing. The reality is that here in Guadeloupe we have one of the oldest populations of any French department and an exodus of young people who are going elsewhere to have children. They're leaving with all their knowledge. They never come back. All that reflects the fact that Guadeloupe is struggling with some real problems. France's vaccine mandate sparked huge protests here in Guadeloupe, also in Martinique. How did that crisis affect the relationship between Guadeloupe and Paris? On July the 12th, 2021, President Emmanuel Macron gave his big speech in which he announced the introduction of the COVID health pass. But he was speaking to a population that was already overwhelmingly vaccinated. The reality here in Guadeloupe is completely different, with 70% of people unvaccinated and only 30% vaccinated. If we'd seen that vaccination rate anywhere else and that level of defiance, we'd be talking about the failure of the government's vaccine policy. But instead, people were talking about intransigent Guadeloupians who were refusing to accept the state's vaccine policy, a policy which wasn't sufficiently explained to people here. It just so happened that the latest act of defiance here was sparked by the response to the health crisis, but it could just as easily have been sparked by the water situation or waste management. It could have come from any part of public policy that's causing suffering here in Guadeloupe. Your work encourages Guadeloupians to take an active role in the future of their island. What exactly does that work look like? 
Alors, euh, évidemment, il y a euh, notre Our organization Guadeloupe in Motion is a think tank that asks Guadeloupeans four big questions. What do you think of Guadeloupe as it stands today? What do you think Guadeloupe should be like? What will Guadeloupe look like in 20 years? Dans 20 ans, ce sera quoi? And then we ask them. On leur demande en créole qui gomme capoter ma pays là. What can you do to help bring about the Guadeloupe that you want to see? It's a bit of a reworking of that famous John F. Kennedy line. Ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. We're asking each and every person to play an active role in transforming this island. What do you think should be the priorities of the next French government when it comes to France's overseas territories? We have considerable expectations ones that are also specific. We want them quickly turned into action. Earlier, we were talking about water. We mentioned the challenges of joint inheritance. We talked about how to prevent a brain drain. But all these questions are directly linked to the relationship that exists between Guadeloupe and mainland France. For me, it's vital that we change that paradigm. We need to abandon what's currently a paternalistic relationship and replace it with a relationship between equal partners. Now, how can we do that? It could happen through economic development. Over the past 20 years, we've started to think about what sort of development projects we should be pursuing in our overseas territories. We're trying to reach exactly the same level of development in Guadeloupe as in mainland France, without taking into account the real means available, or even the real potential of the territory. I'm in favor of letting overseas territories have their say regarding what type of economic development and economic strategy they prefer. Raphael Lapin, thank you so much for answering our questions. Merci, Ampil. Thank you. That brings us to the end of this episode of our election road trip. We're going to leave you now at this beautiful beach as we head to the airport because for our next and final stop, we're heading to Paris to talk about the economy. See you there.